Ms. Bruce, we spoke about the, the gas subsidies and the level of subsidies that we have in Trinidad and Tobago. The move to now touch premium gas, but that accounts for a very, very small percentage of the gas subsidy. In fact, diesel was not touched. That's about 65% uh, of the subsidy itself. Do you think it was enough? Well, he, I think that symbolically the minister has made the right step in in one announcing that we do have to address the gas subsidy, which is approximately $4.5 billion. It really flows the price of oil, the higher the price of oil, the larger the subsidy. One area that I feel that he did not spend enough time on was the leakage of, of diesel internationally. And the steps that we're taking to apprehend persons who are involved in illegal sale of diesel, we are losing hundreds of millions of dollars. Having said that, I think that he has to accelerate the program of gas stations, CNG gas stations across the country. That's going to provide employment opportunities, it might provide financing opportunities. He also has to work with the private sector and indeed with manufacturers to put facilities on their compound, whereas in the case of um, Nicholas's company where there are 40, 50, 60 trucks even in the morning, how do we work with them to, pull in those, to put in those filling stations, to put in high speed pumps and to make it accessible? Um, so that generally I agree with the minister on the move to CNG, but I would have added we have to apprehend those perpetrators externally. But the move to CNG is not a new one. Some will say that the budget was a presentation of same old, same old. Did you see anything that really excited you? I think what's going to catalyze the economy is not same old, same old, but the will to execute around good ideas. Okay. So it's excellence in execution. And one of the things that I think the minister's got to focus on is how do I put in place a framework and a methodology for better execution? How, for example, do I revamp the audit function in the ministry so that when I give a ministry $4 million, one, there's a business model change, because in some cases you need a business model model change at ministry level, at state enterprise level, how do I rationalize some of those state enterprises that have not paid a dividend for many years, are not likely to pay a dividend, and whose function is not social? How do I take a look at some of those special purpose vehicles whose only purpose was to circumvent procedures and go back to the basic procedures and say, we have to bring these procedures, we have to bring the public service regulations into the modern era. So really, we have to, if we're going to be transformative, we have to be courageous, we have to have the character, we have to have a methodology around change, and we have to drive accountability. The PSIP, construction sector, government actually boasts that about 95% of the PI, PSIP was utilized in the last uh, fiscal period. But where are these projects going? What is the benefit, the return on investment? Do you think that that call for accountability was actually heeded by those in power? I think that if you're going to demonstrate accountability in the construction sector, you've got to take a look at one, local content, and two, you've got to bring to book and you've got to introduce the procurement legislation. That's one. In the construction sector, the construction sector is facing tremendous difficulty. Q1 with the TCL strike, which went into Q2, gravely affected and adversely affected one, the construction sector in which is high unemployment still, and secondly, it affected the national economy. A couple of things in my view need to get done. One is that you need to pay contractors for work done in 2008 and 2009. Many contractors still have not been paid. But didn't the government say they were going to uh, clear all outstanding debts? The government has cleared some outstanding debts. The government has not cleared all outstanding debts. And by my count, the outstanding debt is in excess of $1 billion. The second thing that government has got to do is that they've got to put in a proper building code. You cannot talk about construction and infrastructure if you do not have a proper building code because one of the things that has affected economies is if you have a hurricane or an earthquake, your GDP gets affected between 5 and 10 percent and sets the country back. The third thing that the government has to do is to program, manage, and sequence these construction projects from a residential standpoint and from a commercial standpoint. So I applaud the minister on kick-starting the economy through and catalyzing it through construction. But we must not make the same mistake that we made in 2005, right. 6, and 7. And more than that, Hema, um, you've got to work You've got to ensure that your agencies, which are working with some of the key players in the construction sector, the best streets and the ABS, you do two things. One is that you release acreage, mining acreage to these companies, because it is mining acreage and that vertical chain that allows me to get aggregate, that allows me to get trace gravel, that prevents an overheating of the economy, and the very thing you're trying to do, you do not achieve. And the second thing that you've got to do is that you've got to ensure that state mining licenses for 25 years, for 50 years, for 100 years, those licenses are granted. The ministry respectfully is taking way too long to issue these licenses, licenses which are the lifeblood of the organization. The manufacturing sector, looking at the, all of the initiatives offered, what else were you hoping to see in the budget? One of the key things we were looking to see is regulatory reform. And 
We were heartened to hear the minister talk about Minister Barat and the intention of the ease of doing business of setting up a company from 43 days down to three. I like the way it was presented because it's quantitative. We know what he's going to get to. What we didn't get, again, was a timeline as to when they would like to get that done. But that's just one part of doing business. Once you start your company, you have to get WASA approval if you want to build. You want to get town and country approval. You have to get the all ease of doing approvals. business. <laughs> so no point in setting up your company in three days if we can't get so regulatory, other regulatory approvals for months and months. And I think that it just comes down to what I just said a, a little while ago, is moving, removing the disincentives, creating efficiency in the whole system. Again, it'll, it'll bankroll, it'll keep going, and I think, for instance, chemistry, food, and drug is t underinvested in terribly. Bureau of Standards underinvested in. So means take a look at it from an overall point of view and figure, are these things still relevant in the way they are set up? Some, some regulation and so is archaic and needs to be upgraded, needs to be updated. And I think at those public sector levels need to be accountable for their productivity. Looking at uh, all that was announced yesterday, Mr. Brooks, uh, are you confident that that 1.2% growth rate is going to be achieved? I think the 1.2% is still an estimate. But 1% HEMA coming from negative growth in 2010, negative growth in 2011, mm -hmm. is still a very fragile number. It is. To really drive the economy, you've got to get up to the 3 and 4% level, a la Suriname, a la Guyana. And when one takes a look at all of the countries which have mineral wealth, all of them, interestingly, they were all able to recover within one year to two years of 2008, and their growth levels are the three to four percent range. So we have we, we have some work to do in terms of our own economy. I just want to tackle onto a couple of points that Nicholas has made. One is that. In fact, you probably have to go to a break. We're going to go straight to the 7 a.m. newscast. When we come back, we're going to pick up where we left off. We're going to continue our conversation with Jerry Brooks and also Nicholas Lockjack. Stay with us.